Um, I'm going to start my question with a very short story. I promise I'll give you short. My mom taught for Atlanta Public Schools, uh, language arts. One day she came home from school. She said the band director, Melvin Miller, was out that day. They had a substitute, and he gave her his business card and said, tell your son to give me a call. It was your father's business card. Oh, take that. <laughs> and he invited me out to the church where they were having rehearsal, uh-huh. brought me back to the house. I want to say the, ki- <laughs> the kindness that he showed me stays with me to this day. Oh, we're well, good, man. Um, he brought, I, I got to What's see... What's your name? Nick Edelstein. Okay. I got to see the rehearsal space in the basement. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I've always wondered, because now I have boys of my own, yeah. I've wondered what was it like growing up in that house having rehearsals, and specifically my question is, because he played the saxophone, Mm -hmm. which I think of as a lyrical instrument, Mm -hmm. are there any lessons from, as a saxophone player, you know, that you would now take as a drummer that you keep with you in drumming? Oh, yeah. Yeah, my dad used to tell me all the time. I mean, he was big on me practicing, but he said to me, he would always say to me, I want you to listen to how I play the sax, and try to play the drums as lyrically, you said you just said the word, as lyrically as you possibly can. So what that meant to me is, you know, I'm just looking for kind of ways to express melodies on the kit and not just playing patterns over patterns. I'm trying to, I'm trying to formulate kind of melodic lines, you know, which is why I kind of fell in love with the, the whole clave thing because it frees me up to do that, having something, having that, that pulse going, you know. Another part of your question, growing up in that, that house is magical because I would wake up in the morning and Miles would be playing. I wake up the next day, Coltrane, constant. I come home from school, you know, Roy Haynes is burning out with Chick, you know, so I got a lot of music, a lot of music, you know, and uh, yeah, my dad was real, totally instrumental in, in, in me being the musician that I am. You know, because he just, he did, he fed me, he did everything a parent should do for a child, you know. And then once I kind of, they kind of just discovered I was a prodigy, he was like, wow, you know. So he just kept, kept supporting me, you know. And that's what I say to the parents. If you have kids who are into music or arts or whatever they're into, just support them, man. That's all they need, you know, support them, yeah. That's a great story, man. Nice to meet you, buddy. Yeah, cool. That makes me feel so good because I, 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 you know, I lost dad in 20, uh, 2012, you know, and I was in, I was in, when he passed, I was in Europe. I was in Germany with Jeff Lorber and uh, I called home and, and found out that he had passed and, uh, I got up. We had a gig that night, and it was the very first gig of the tour, so there was no way I could come home. And uh, and I just sat at the edge of the bed, and I thought about it. I said, okay, well, I know Dad would go, you better go play that gig. <laughs> Don't worry about me, partner. I'm okay. You know what I mean? So that got me through that. But just his love and the way he guided me, you know, was uh, paramount, though. Yeah.